morning, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Professor Assam and Professor Nasser and uh, Professor Said Ali for the kind invitation. Uh, chronic limb shortening ischemia is an advanced stage of the peripheral arterial disease with the varying degrees of wrist pain that is not responding to regular painkillers for most uh, of the time, more than two weeks. And also it's associated with ischemic ulceration and tissue loss like gangrene. Classification, as we know, uh, Rutherford classification, mainly grade four, five, six, and Fontaine stage, stage three and four. And uh, the task classification uh, mentioned ankle brachial index less than 0.4, and to pressure less than 50 millimeter mercury. The incidence of chronic limb threatening ischemia is increasing in the developed countries, and also it's increasing rapidly in the developing countries, most likely because of the aging of the population, diabetes, and smoking. With a poor prognosis in terms of limb loss and pre uh, premature mortality. As we're looking here in the scheme, the uh, critical limb ischemia around 1 to 3 percent, and uh, the one year outcome for the amputation is around 30 percent, and for the mortality is 25 percent. And for the patients that uh, at the beginning uh, diagnosed as a peripheral arterial disease with intermittent claudication, the five year outcome from them that 5 to 10 percent of them will change to critical limb ischemia and they will need an amputation of the lower limb. And for amputation, this will increase uh, the uh, economic uh, impact, uh, mainly as this patient will need more home health aids. Some of them will need construction and home adaptation, and this will end with longer hospital stay and more increase in the, uh, the cost and also the influence in the work, the economy, and the long-term health care cost. This is a single uh, center prospective observational study that compared between the procedure cost, the total in hospital cost, and the follow up after 12 months cost for, for patients that got either vein bypass surgery, best endovascular treatment, or major lower limb amputation. And this was done uh, in Birmingham Hospital on the uh, critical limb uh, ischemic patient in the Basel Prospective. A cohort study, and this showed that there is in the procedural uh, cost, the bypass surgery was the highest cost, and for the uh, for the in hospital cost, it was more for the major lower limb amputation, and in the sum of in hospital cost and the uh, follow up for 12 months post operative, it was also high for the uh, major lower limb amputation. With a, uh, with a limb salvage program in the United States, they found that an established limb salvage program can, can save the cost on around 26 billion per year. Uh, over that, there is also the uh, quality of life and the depression and anxiety uh, for a patient with critical limb ischemia. In this study, they uh, have the score for anxiety and depression for critical limb ischemia and uh, they have the score baseline preoperatively, early postoperative, and late postoperative. And they found that patients with critical limb ischemia, they have a high incidence of anxiety and depression symptoms. This is a, a sub-analysis for the best uh, CLI trial uh, regarding the quality of life. And most of the patients, they got the health-related quality of life uh, measurement tools, and they found that patients with critical limb ischemia in, such a, in, this, uh, in this study, they have a very low health-related quality of life score, and most of them has a history of smoking with impaired ambulation and opioid use, and more in female sex. Staging, staging here uh, for Wi-Fi classification is mainly to use the factors uh, that affect the amputation risk and the clinical management. And this can be augmented also with the glass classification that was published in the ESVS. And it's, it mainly classifies the pattern of arterial disease and they are defining the target arterial pass. And the grading here is mainly for aortoiliac inflow disease, femoropopletal disease, infrapopletal, and inframalleolar orbital disease. 
In 2005, the, uh, the first uh, analysis for the, for the basal trial shows that there is similar short-term clinical outcome for the bypass surgery compared with the endovascular uh, first strategy. But in this study, they do a more uh, a further two and a half years follow-up for intention to treat analysis regarding amputation-free survival and overall survival, and they found that in average risk patient with critical ischemia with a life expectancy more than two years, that the bypass first uh, strategy was associated with a better outcome regarding the amputation free survival and overall survival. This is another comparative study, and it was done in UK, and it's mainly for patients who have plain balloon angioplasty that was running in the hospital between 2009 and 2014, and the result was uh, compared against the observational outcome of the Basel trial, Basel I trial, and they found that patient treated during the time between 2009 and 2014 had a significant worse of the amputation-free survival and the overall survival, and for that, this study did not support the hypothesis of widespread uh, adoption of the endovascular first strategy, and they recommend the vein bypass should still be the, uh, considered as a gold standard treatment for critical ischemia patient. And finally, the result of the uh, PEST uh, CLI international randomized control trial that have a two cohort of patients. The first cohort, a patient with a single segment great saphenous veins that are suitable for a bypass surgery, and cohort two patients that patient will, who need an alternative conduit like uh, upper limb conduits. And he found, and the primary outcome was the composite of major adverse limb event, either amputation, reintervention, or death. And the, uh, the result was found that patient with critical ischemia was an adequate single segment of great sufferance vein, and these patients are uh, suitable for both intervention, the bypass surgery or the endovascular surgery. They found that the initial bypass surgery strategy have a lower incidence regarding major adverse uh, limb or life. Uh, and, uh, and comparing with the intervention, uh, with the endovascular intervention. But patient without a suitable great saphenous vein, the result was almost show no significant difference. This is one of our patients in our hospital, 55 years with critical ischemia and uh, tissue loss on the left hallux with low TBI and toe pressure. He got a good segment of a great saphenous vein and we did for him a left uh, popliteal to posterior tibial uh, bypass and after, uh, after the surgery, his toe pressure was uh, markedly improved and he has complete healing of the ulcer after six weeks. So in conclusion, critical limb uh, ischemia patient uh, should have a proper assessment of the overall uh, comorbidities. Another minute. Uh, should have uh, the assessment of their other medical uh, comorbidities in conjunction with the full assessment of, the of their lower limb uh, vascular disease, and also the health-related quality of life problem should be considered in the discussion with the patient regarding the possible intervention, and again, the bypass surgery, either infraguinal, infragenicular, or bedal bypasses for patients with critical ischemia with a single segment great saphenous pain is still the first option for treating patients with critical ischemia. Thank you.